Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors, America's only daily outdoor TV show. Your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors. I'm Winston Chester. I'm glad you're here this morning. Got a great show lined up, but first, Let's take a look at our weather, brought to us by Gulf Coast Air Conditioning. Drew Pollard and his hardworking crew taking care of our everyday comfort needs. And it's going to be fairly comfortable. High today, 75, low 45. But we do have some weather coming in and some wind blowing. In fact, I had a double check. They're calling for winds today coming out southwest around 15 to 20. That's pretty strong. Our water temperature at the end of the pier is staying at 66 degrees. So when it gets a chance to, uh, to settle down a little bit, you might have some good luck fishing off the pier with this warm, warm weather, uh, warm water in that area. Okay, our river reading is brought to us by uh, Winston Chester Show, a uh, Panhandle Outdoors. <laughs> we got the Appalachian Coal of Brunstown, 12.2, and it's high. And it's staying high. I thought yesterday I talked about it going down a little bit, but it's staying high right now. Choctatcha Carabill, uh, seven foot even. It got a little bit of drop to it, but it's still high. Like we said, this weekend's uh, river activities now, you'll be dealing with some high water, but it's not going to be uh, it's not gonna be too bad. Uh, and we're going to talk about it on tomorrow's fishing report, some things you can do. All right, our tide chart brought to us by uh, Kent Forest Lawn. We're looking at a, a high tide this afternoon at 10, or tonight at 10.35, but the low tide is right now around 6.54. And it's sort of a neat tide, not much tides at all for the next couple of days. Okay, we'll take a break and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back and welcome our guest, a familiar face here on Panhandle Outdoor, Daniel Good morning, Cole. How's it going? Glad to have you back. Yep. Hadn't it's seen you since, since last year. Yep. <laughs> it's been a little bit. Uh, well, we're going to talk about hunting and fishing and all kind of outdoor stuff. But I said, first, let's talk about in boating. He's our boat expert and all. And, and I, I sort of, I didn't get tickled because I, I just shake my head in amazement how, you know, as after the hurricane, we had so many, uh, quote, contractors come through, try to help people out. And they were just a bunch of riffraff. Some of them were, some did great, but some were not even licensed at all. Now you were telling me, y'all are getting some stuff in, in, the, in your business or what's going on? Yeah, there, there's a, a couple people in our area. Um, we don't name any names, but uh, they're not, certified by NAMS or SAMS, okay. which is your two main certification groups for marine surveyors. And so there's been several cases where they've done surveys for people and the bank that they did it for uh, or the insurance company refused to accept the survey because they didn't have that. So just be aware if you hire a surveyor, whether if it's us or there, there's a couple other good surveyors in our area, you know, be sure that they're either NAMS or SAMS certified or accredited so that they can tell that they've, they've done what they're supposed to do to know what they're doing because uh, there are other people who do not have those that are in that business that yeah. you'll end up paying for something that you can't use and then you've got to go and you have to hire one of us. Well, uh, well, and you could get in financial trouble if you, something happens and then you think it's covered and, and it's not, right? I mean, That's the insurance right. company could... Well, there's an extension. Yeah, there's several extensions of that. One is that, you know, if they're not qualified, even if the... Uh, insurance survey passes goes through and they don't catch that and then it comes back and something damages the boat they could come back and say well you know we didn't realize this guy's not certified so we're not going to cover the claim mm. so there's a lot of caveats to that and mm. not the insurance companies wouldn't try to get out of paying for a claim uh, <laughs> no if we open the door for it <laughs> yeah and there's a legal way out we, we know what's going to happen yeah. there so oh, sure anyway <laughs> Just uh, be aware of that, yeah. and and it's, it has to do with the, the quality of the survey you're going to get as well. Some of these people have changed company names several times. They've okay. moved around. They've done a lot of things to try and cover what okay. they've been in trouble for already. So yeah. just be a well aware that these people are out there, and that, uh, <laughs> you want to really vet a surveyor if you're going to hire one. Because you got to stay on top of it, like buyer beware. You just got to be make sure you check everything out in, in right. every field of, uh, like that. So that's right. Uh, that, that's interesting, and uh, it's sad it has to be that way at times. But uh, we appreciate you being upfront, honest, and working hard with people. What's been going on? You've been doing a lot of surveying lately, and well, we've we've been catching up, but we're we're busy. Everything's slowed down as far as the market, okay. which has been a breather for us because we've had so much to catch up on, because we we do so much more than just fiberglass boats so yeah 
we uh, you know we've been doing a lot of tug and barge surveys and things like that. We've caught those pretty much up. Uh, now we uh, always going into January. It seems like that's when it hits. We do our recertification courses. So like we're ABYC certified in marine systems, right. uh, which is extra credential. You don't have to have as a, a, a surveyor, but it certainly makes you better prepared, better uh, taught. Mm -hmm. uh, and so now we're we're doing our uh, ABYC standard certification. We're re up in that. Uh, we've we've held the certification for quite a while, but mm -hmm. you have to recertify it every so many years, and so that's just part of the process of us staying on top of our game to be able to provide the best product that we can for our clients. That's very good. That's very good. You're seeing a, a, a lot of you say it's sort of slow down. Is it with the big boats or the smaller boats, or just a little bit of a slow down? In? Uh, usually uh, just across the board. It's a really. seasonal kind of thing. Just a seasonal kind of thing. Usually yeah. we get to the end of the year. Uh, usually you see a slowdown around. Uh, you know, uh, November, December, because of the holidays. Yeah. And then uh, you get into January, everybody's restarting for the new year. Usually February picks up a little bit, but then by March you're getting into spring and it's yeah. like, it picks up and runs again. So this is just a good time for us to do all our business maintenance to get it out of the way and be ready to roll again. And somebody was saying the other day, it's like, what, seven weeks to March. <laughs> somebody, I know. I said, that don't make sense. I don't mean, I time started flies, adding up. doesn't it? And here it is. It, time flies. Said, yeah. We're almost halfway through January, so uh, it will be picking up. Uh, as a consumer, people want to buy boats. You know, I, we see them in this area here on the coast is just full of boat buyers and boat sellers. Uh, what, what, what's one of some of the good times of the year to buy one? I'm talking about medium depends. size boats. You know, your 20 footers and 25 footers. Or is it? I know in the old days it used to be end of the summer. You know, but now there's so much out there. And so much advertising. There's a lot out there, but I think that edge still holds true right now. Uh, what we've seen with the big brokerages uh -huh. is uh, they're really cutting their prices and okay. they're really, uh, you know, looking to move inventory because it has slowed down so much. So actually, right now is not a bad time to look. Okay. If you know where to look, just be careful because, mm -hmm. you know, like like always, sometimes when it's too good a deal, there's a reason. But yeah, but there are deals to be had out there. I always I get tickled at our loopers that come through, you know, the big loop mm -hmm. and all. Do you ever run across any of them? They have any of them have very much boat trouble. Or are they pretty well set when they're coming through on these loops. You know, that's a a group of uh, boaters that seems to be really dedicated to being prepared. Yes. And so the boat, the type of boats they use are are typically, uh, you know. Uh, very robust, the equipment on them is t mm -hmm. generally very good, and typically they, they do a good maintenance check before they do the mm -hmm. loop. So I'd, I'd say for the most part, they're you know they're, they're pretty straight up just enjoying their trip, yeah. having a good time. We know a lot of people who have bought a boat, uh, like a Rossboro uh, or a Sea Dory, completely set it up, did the loop. After they did the loop, I've done that, and they just sell the boat, and somebody okay. Because they're ready for that boat to move, it's going to get a good deal on that boat. That's a good point. Well I didn't talk about that. Yeah, so. we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back. Okay, welcome back. We're sitting here with Daniel Cole. We're going to show a quick little video call right now because I've got it set up. It's only a few seconds, but it just shows you uh, what, what's going to happen in the water. Sometimes you never know. We're talking about water, all the things in the water. So check this out, okay? That's a drone and a gator. That drone's taking a picture of that gator, and that, that drone's taking a picture, trying to go, going away from it, and then, boom! <laughs> you just never know what's going to happen with a gator. Uh, and you're speaking of, you know, I know you grew up down in Appalachian Coast. Y'all would see a bunch of gators, wouldn't you? Yeah, uh, about anywhere. Uh, thank you, Joe Eddie, for, for getting that to us. Now, speaking of outdoor stuff, uh, you did some, uh, you've been doing some outdoor stuff, so. Uh, yeah, we're still hitting the quail hunting whenever we can. I, we've, we've had, you know, a really good time doing that. And yeah. I, uh, deer hunting, I haven't had any success this year, and, and, and honestly haven't had time to go as much as I'd like to, but, mm -hmm. so it's just not been happening, but, but uh, it's nice to get together with a group of guys and do some quail hunting. That's, that's always, that's fun, it's yeah. a little more exciting to me anyway, so. I know what you mean. I, I haven't done any this, this, I'm, I'm planning on doing something soon, but, uh, uh, you got a couple of pictures here. Let's talk about them. Let's okay. see. This one right here. Uh, okay. Yep. 
this is our last trip we went. This was the end of December, I think. And uh, we went out, took the dogs. Uh, so some of uh, the Marine people might notice uh, the, the guy there on the left is Steve Walker with, uh, or I'm sorry, Steve Boyko with Walker Marine. Okay. He usually puts our hunts together. And uh, then Dalton there on the right is the charter boat captain, and that's his friend with him. I'm sorry, I can't remember his name now. It's the first time we've hunted with him. But anyway, we went out, and we, we had a pretty good day. It was a very windy day. Uh, some of the birds, when you turned them loose, they just... Mm -hmm. We call them, yeah, because it was blowing so hard. But we still got in, and I think I think we got twenty two birds. I was gonna say you got here on the tailgate. That, that's a good good mess of birds there, and the, do the dogs. You term dog tired, aren't they? They, 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 are, they were laying, sacked out, laying down. Uh, they beautiful ran a million miles. <laughs> oh, uh, and beautiful dogs. Those they, uh, they're all right there. Uh, yep. Using water, and they're, they're flat out tired. Britain spaniels. Beautiful. Uh, oh, it is German short hair. German short hair. I'm sorry, German short hair. You're right. They're smart dogs. They are. Boy, they got so much energy. It's amazing. Uh, did uh, Did you train these dogs or? Some, oh, oh no, no. I, I was just invited to the hunt. Yeah. Uh, one's Steve's and uh, one's Dalton's, and two of them were Steve's and one's Dalton's. Yeah. The fourth one, I forget who brought him, but. We had a nice time. What size? Tell me, what size shot do y'all use on the shells? I just use seven and a half. Okay. I mean, uh, yeah, uh, or eight, whatever's That's on what sale, kind of, you know. Yeah. But uh, it seems to get the job done, and it, you know, it, it, it's not as expensive as some of them. You brought up a good point, and it's talking about the velocity of the shell, uh, and especially like on bird hunting or duck hunting in particular. If you're shooting a long shot, then you got. It's got, that wind is going to affect it when it's blowing like 15 or 20. <laughs> Did you see some of that the other day when I won? Oh, yeah. Did you really? Yeah, because you shoot it and the wad uh, would go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you know, then as it sort of spreads out, those little little BBs, I used to call them, they're, just, they're going to start going down and away from the target. Oh, you got, well, oh, you could it. see the birds laying there. They were pretty ruffled. Yeah. So it was like we were getting on them really quick. We were really shooting them a little closer than what we like to, but because they were getting away so quick. Uh -huh. And we, we put birds out, and, that, and that's something else. These weren't wild birds, these were birds we put out. Yeah. But a lot of people, uh, when they put them out, you know, they'll spin them or shake them or something and get them real dizzy so they'll stay yeah, in place. I've seen that, yeah. We don't do that, we yeah. just, we take them, turn them out, and where they are is where they are, and then we let the dogs go, and then. Uh, I, I'm like, you know, I've been with some people who did that, I just sort of shook my head, why are they doing that? And I understand why, <clears> but yeah. to get them confused, I just don't know where to go. but. <laughs> It, it's uh, it's not realistic when training the dogs because when you do take them on a wild bird hunt, mm -hmm. you know they're not going to find these birds. A wild bird will flush a lot quicker mm -hmm. than a, a cage bird. So, you know, it, it, it's better for training the dogs, and it, it, I think it's more sporting for the bird. Well, and yeah. once we lose, I mean, you're going to lose some, and that's fine because yeah. the areas we go, they're building up the the natural habitat with natural ones, you know, they'll become wild, so. We, we hope we hope that and get away from the coyotes and, and yeah. the hawks and everything. And some, I know some of them do, I, they've proved that some of them do, but uh, you've got to keep re, you got to keep replenishing it on a regular right. basis. That's right. Where are y'all getting your birds from now? There's a gentleman uh, in Graceville. I, I have his card, okay. I can't remember, but he, he raises them and uh, he, he always turned out some quality birds. So. I'm sorry, I can't yeah. remember his name. Yeah, that's that's good. I know uh, I, I see some folks uh, on my Howard Creek group. They they have some quail eggs for sale, and mm -hmm. I, I just uh, it, it's it, I've always since I've been doing the show way before I started doing the show. I always just had a special fondness of quail because I think growing up you did it, but uh, when they started slacking off and not seeing that many, I was really I've always wanted to go to areas and just re, you know replenish the flock <clears throat> and the, the cubbies and all. Right. And uh, I, there's an outfit called Quail Unlimited, like Ducks Unlimited, and they, they do a good job. There's not enough people doing it, so, yeah. Well, you know, it's such a quiet segment of hunting. I exactly. Mean, uh, everybody here deer hunts. Everybody here, you know, hog hunts. Everybody here. Yeah. And, you know, when I was introduced to it, uh, you know, I knew it existed, but I always thought of it as like a, a, a Midwest type of hunting. I, right. I didn't really realize that people did it so much here. Mm -hmm. And then once you learn, I mean, it's addictive. You love mm -hmm. doing it. It and, is. And they're great to eat. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, But they, 
I think a lot of people just aren't as familiar with it. Yeah, yeah. I think you're right. We're going to take our final break. We're going to be right back with Daniel. Okay, welcome back. Let's take a look at our fishing game times today, brought to us by Blue Water Outriggers in Port St. Joe. I want to take this moment to say a happy birthday to Mr. George Duran of Blue Water Outriggers and, and also the Piggly Wiggly fame. And he's, he's quite a quite an institution down in Gulf County, Port St. Joe. I thank the world of him and uh, happy birthday, George. Okay, appreciate the sponsorship and all the good things you do for your fellow man in your community, and, and he does. Uh, our time, by the way, are, are 251 to 451 and 311 to 511. If you could pick, uh, you know, talking about quail hunting, fishing game time don't matter much that much. That's right. But I know you like a deer hunt. Mm -hmm. So uh, have, have you done much with deer hunting this year? No, I really haven't. I just summer. haven't had time. Yeah. I've been too busy. And you, you've got you some game cameras this year. I did. Uh, I went to C&G, got some of those... Uh, Browning uh, game cameras that report to your phone. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, it's my first year messing with those, and but it's nice because days it's, on end, nothing's been coming that you would yeah. probably be sitting in a stand. I mean, I'm I'm coming to really appreciate what powerful technology that is for your I game. I have, uh, Daniel. I feel the same way. I I got my several years back, and and you just you just you figure things out. Like I say, I'm, I mean, if I'd gone there yesterday, I'd just been sitting there, and nothing coming and all, but. I know we won't get out woods and all, but there, there's something else. They really, especially when it comes right to your phone, you know, live or, or you know, just getting a picture over overnight and seeing what time. And again, it's still, I, I knew this growing up, and we used to laugh about it. Deer are nocturnal. <laughs> the big bucks are, <laughs> the big bucks just seem to be nocturnal most of the time, except during the rut. The rut's the only time you're gonna get them, and yeah. you know they're not in the area very long. But when a camera tells you, hey, they're in the area today. You know, you know, you better be there by tomorrow. You know, there's mm -hmm. still a chance he'll be in the area, but yeah, it's, especially it's, it's especially better than hours on stand and not seeing nothing. You know, especially if one shows up on that camera that you haven't seen around, so you know he's coming. He can he ranging in your area. You better go ahead and take advantage of what you can. That's right. That, that's interesting. Okay, uh, I was going to talk about uh, since you're a boat expert and all. Uh, if we're getting ready. We always talk about running motor during the winter time. Mm -hmm. You strongly believe in that, don't you? Yeah, just just just, get just to let it run some, you know. Yeah. We uh, I, I do mind. How long do you let it run? Say you got to say a, a lot of folks got seventy-five, hundred horse, fifty horse. Uh, it just so depends. Somebody, well, I think uh, Roger down at BJ Marine told me five or six minutes, maybe, just to make sure it's getting in there, spitting and water getting warm. And right. Keep, you keep fresh fuel in yeah. the carburetor and keep yeah. it where, you know, all your gaskets and stuff stay wet because they'll dry out if it just sits. Yeah, I know it. And that's something we you had and, a problem. I know it. And that's something that if you're. And then now these new, these new fuel injector motors, I, you know, it, it still, I'm sure, helps keep everything clean and primed and moving. So. Yeah. I will get caught in a, in a trap that we're, you know, we're such outdoorsmen, we love to hunt, and then all of a sudden, you know, we let our boat go, and you got to stop. Wait a minute, I got to do that. I find myself doing that. <laughs> and I, I talk about it on the show, and then, wait, when have I done mine <laughs> lately? Well, the nicest thing is just, you know, you take it, and, uh, you know, we've got a couple of really good marine places here in town. Just yeah. let them go over it and get it, get it all yeah. taken care of for you, you know? Yeah. I, I, I like doing stuff for myself, but I just stay so busy. It's just easier sometimes to drop it off and let them do it. I, I've learned that over the years. I used to, when I was younger, I did all kinds of stuff. And now I just, I, I'm going to pay somebody who knows more about it than I do to take care of it. That's right. <laughs> I, I know uh, Roger, talking about BJ Marine, he's still a couple of weeks behind, but he's just, he's going to do it right. And he's going to take his time. He's going to do it right. And right. I, I, I go by and I see him on a regular basis. and. Uh, He's just stacked up, and but people trust him. And that's the thing about a marine mechanic. You gotta have somebody you trust. That's right. And and you know it's gonna get done right. That's right. Because he has other marine mechanics to call him and ask him some questions. I've been there when when they've called and asked him something. That's right. Uh, we got some good ones too. Yeah, I we mean, do. Uh, you've got Bubba at Hearts, and you got uh, yeah. They do a good job, and you got uh, yeah, they do. Uh, R. J. Down there at uh, the marine place on. Uh, Beach Drive. Yes, yes. Okay. RJ is a great one. He has been doing it for a long time. Ever. And yeah. uh, they do such a great job. And, and 
you know. So we got good people. Yeah. We got a couple minutes left. What's your plans uh, the next couple of weeks? You want to try to get out and do some hunting, or? Well, I'm, right now I'm, I, I've got a week planned out. Of, to, it takes that long to, to prep and do the certification for this marine standard. You got to get that so done. I got to get that done, and then uh, we're we're catching up all the bat log of boats that we've had that we need to get the reports out on. We're, we're booking some new stuff, but we're already booking in uh, to February. Okay. So February is picking up already. We may see an early jump in the spring with the survey, and we we just don't know yet. But it, by March, I know we'll be running again with everything wide open. So, so is it a good time now for people to sort of call and get you on schedule or something? Or yeah, well, I'll tell you what I like about this kind of time frame here. This is a time frame, too. Uh, it's the dead season for a commercial fishermen. Yeah. And a lot of them have to re-up for their uh, insurance surveys, just for maintenance surveys, you know. So... It's uh, a good time. We like catching the guys up too, and well, they have our full attention. And you know, we're not so running around with everything else. So oh, good. All you folks down at Appalachian School are doing well. <clears throat> yeah, they're all doing good. I did not realize you went to school with Joe Eddy. Yeah, me and Joe Eddy. His uh, that Napa station there in Appalachia yeah. uh, used to be a gas station. His dad oh. owned and. We used to hang out there when we were kids all the time. I lived in the house behind it, so I, I we used to hang out all the time. It's changed a little bit, hasn't it? It's changed quite a bit. <laughs> uh, but um, it, It's changed a whole lot. You don't see very many locals. And Joe is one of the top flounder geekers around, around this area. He's something else. So, all right. Well, you have a good, uh, get over your test and all, but then go, get to go quail hunting, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Hopefully the deer will come in this, this month, too. Hey, good to have you back. I know. <laughs> right. well, yeah, thank maybe we'll start showing back. up. Folks, thank you all for watching Panhandle, Panhandle Outdoors. If you have any questions, give Daniel a call on your boat, and he'll be glad to help you out. You do something good for somebody today, you have a great day in the outdoors, and God bless. Thanks for watching America's only daily outdoor TV show, Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester, featuring hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle Outdoors.